I've been running the Dragonfly hotend in my LDO Voron 0.1 for the past couple of months, and it's quickly proven itself to be a very solid and reliable hotend. As far as specs go, it has a bimetal heat break, the ability to be used up to 500 Celsius with the appropriate heater cartridge and thermistor, a fairly large heater block, and an included plated copper nozzle, which is something I prefer heavily over the standard brass nozzle. A couple of months ago during a live stream on the ModBot Army channel, I was talking about the Dragonfly hotend, when Bardicus, an awesome community member, let me know he had a Dragonfly BMS that was collecting dust. The BMS is a version of the Dragonfly that's meant to be as close as a drop-in for the standard Crowdy style hot end that comes on a lot of their printers, and he kindly offered to send it over here so that way I can install it on a printer. My Ender 3 V2 has an aftermarket Micro Swiss dual-geared extruder, but it's still rocking the PTFE line hot end that it came with. So in today's video, we will be converting the Ender 3 V2 over to the Dragonfly hot end. And although we're installing it on the Ender 3 V2 specifically, the install process is going to be very similar for a lot of the other Crowdy printers. And I'll even show a section where it's going to be easier for a lot of the other Crowdy printers. And there's some less steps involved than on the Ender 3 V2. We'll specifically be going over the physical installation of the hot end, and then after that, I will make a few recommendations on things I would do next to make sure that the hot end is up and running successfully. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. If you're installing this on the Ender 3 V2, like me, the first thing we'll need to do is print out an adapter before we do anything else. I found this over on 3djake.com and I'll have a link to the product page in the description, but in the bottom of the product listing, there is a link where you can download this STL. And this is just an adapter for the stock fan shroud that comes on the Ender 3 V2 that we will need to print out. It's a fairly small and quick print, but it does need quite a bit of supports. So take your time and make sure you print at a fairly fine resolution. I went ahead and printed it at 0.2 layer height. As far as material goes, you'll want to use either PETG or ABS. PLA just has way too low of a melting temperature and it will, it will not last very long being so close to the nozzle. Ideally, ABS is going to be a better option, but I'm starting off with PETG and if for some reason it does end up warping or degrading over time, I'll either reprint it in ABS or just print out a new one. There's a single page guide in the product page on 3D Jake on how to swap out the old shroud for the new one. It is not very good and if you don't understand it don't worry because we will be covering it in this video. I did quickly want to state that we are not going to be covering the assembly of the actual hot end. The main reason for this is that I received mine already assembled and the company has a pretty good PDF guide on the assembly process. That said, with the BMS, they intend for you to use a brass tube and your existing bulb type thermistor. I'm not doing that. I'm upgrading mine to a 50 watt heater cartridge and a, a cartridge style thermistor. And so I would highly recommend getting a cartridge style thermistor when getting this rather than using the sort of adapter tube that they include with it. We'll need to start off by removing the screw that holds the fan housing to the back plate. There's only one screw and it's going to be the one in between the two V-slot wheels. Once that's removed, you'll be able to pivot the fan housing off the side. I do have a zip tie that I need to remove. I don't believe that's stock and it's something that I added when I installed the BL Touch, but if you have one as well, remove that zip tie. Next, we'll remove the blue retention clip. This can just be done by using your thumb and pulling it off. And then we'll need to remove the Bowden tube. Mine was pretty stuck. Normally, you just press down on the round retention clip while pulling up. I had to use some needle nose pliers to convince it. If you're not able to press down that ring to release the Bowden tube, you might also want to use a tool to help you out. Now it's time to remove the old hot end. It will be held in with two screws and we'll be reusing both of these screws in just a moment to install the Dragonfly BMS, so make sure you don't lose them. With the original hot end, I just went ahead and placed it off to the side right now and I'll deal with the wires in just a moment. With the old hot end removed, you can grab the Dragonfly fully assembled and line it up with the back plate. We'll be using the same two screws and the same mounting points on that back plate to bolt this. Just make sure that the thermistor and the heater cartridge wires are coming out the right side, which is the same side as the stock heater cartridge. Once secured, take the Bowden tube and push it into the top of the hot end and grab the blue retaining clip to make sure it's locked in place. Now it's time to remove the fan shroud. There are two screws holding it in place, one sort of on the outside more so, and the other one is a bit more hidden on the inside beneath the heatsink blower fan. We'll be using these in just a second, so make sure you hold on to them. 
Once you have the two screws removed, you can slide the layer cooling fan out along with the fan shroud. There are two tiny Phillips head screws that are holding the fan shroud to the blower fan and we'll need to remove both of those. Again, we will be reusing these, so hold on to them. After that, you can get rid of the fan shroud and we will be doing the opposite. We'll grab the new fan shroud and install it the exact same way. So the two screws we just removed from the blower fan will go through the blower fan and into the plastic. You'll want to hand tighten them, but don't over tighten them because again, this is a thin printed part. This will then slide back into the fan housing and it'll line up with two little pegs. Then we'll take the two screws we initially used and reapply them. One will again go on the sort of upper outside and the other one will go on the inside beneath the heatsink fan. With that reassembled, we'll need to take the fan housing as well as the thermistor and heater cartridge, and in my case, the BL touch cable, and do our best to feed that towards the center opening of the fan housing. Then using one hand to secure everything in place, we'll head to the back of the machine and insert the bolt that holds the whole fan housing to the back plate. Once secured, we'll need to remove any and all zip ties on the wiring harness because we are going to be moving on to the wiring portion. There's likely a couple on the wire harness itself, and there's one on the back bottom side of the machine that has it bolted to the frame. You'll also need to remove that one. Next, we need to get access to the controller. There's going to be three screws on the bottom of the controller that need to be removed and two screws on the top. The bed's likely blocking the screws on the top, so you'll need to move it forward and backward to gain access to those screws. When you do, you'll be able to remove the cover on the board housing. Inside, we'll need to loosen the two screws that are holding the hot end cables into the screw down terminal. In my instance, those were the leftmost two cables. And then we need to remove the old thermistor, which is just a two pin plug that was in the very corner. With those cables unplugged, we need to now pull them through the entire cable braid. This took me some serious time, and I ended up actually removing the plug from the thermistor to allow everything to slide in or slide through a bit easier. So just take your time and make sure you're not pulling too hard. And if you work the cables as well as the cable braid and sort of pull from the hot end side, you should be able to remove the thermistor and heater cartridge cables. If you thought the fun was over, you'd be incorrect because now it's time to get the new thermistor and heater cartridge and feed them from the hot end side through that same cable braid back to the controller. It just takes some time and patience is definitely the name of the game here. I then used the old thermistor plug to insert the leads for the new thermistor, which worked out perfectly and plugged this into the board in the same exact port that I had removed the old thermistor from. Then taking the new heater cartridge wires, I removed the cover so that way the wire was exposed and I inserted them into the same clamp down terminal that I had removed the old wires from and made sure that I secured them in place. Before doing anything else, I highly recommend powering on the printer and making sure that you can see the temperature reading and that the thermistor is working correctly. And it's also not a bad idea to heat up the heater cartridge briefly to make sure that that is also functioning. Once confirmed, we'll then need to reinstall the three screws on the bottom and the two screws on the top. And you can go crazy with any sort of cable or wire management that you want to do. Now we need to hot tighten the nozzle. For this, I maxed out the temperature on my hot end, which is 260 Celsius. It's firmware locked and I'll probably adjust that later on, but let the hot end climb to its max temp and then take something like an adjustable wrench to grab onto the heat block and then something small like a spanner wrench to then tighten the nozzle. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight, but this is just a hand tight thing. You do not need to put your arm into it as you can risk damaging the sensitive heat break. If you're wondering why my fan housing is off, I did it so that way I can get a clearer shot for the video, but I also realized that it is mandatory to loosen the hot end to get the silicone sock on. So if you wanna rock the silicone sock, you have to take the fan housing off, loosen the two screws that have it bolted to the frame, so that way you can slip this on and then re-tighten. A little bit of a pain, but it shouldn't really need to be done more than once. At this point, Point, you're ready to rock and roll and the only thing I did was a quick PID tune since I have gyres firmware they can easily PID tune the machine from the screen itself and if you have an Ender 3v2 I highly recommend installing this I can link in the description to the guide that I made if you do not have an Ender 3v2 or if you're not using gyres firmware this can still easily be done by hooking up the printer to a computer that has a console that you can just run some commands breaks and makes has a super simple video on this process which I will also have linked in the description 
option. Aside from that, you might need to slightly adjust temps in your slicer. And like me, if your firmware capped at 260 Celsius for the max temp and you want to print hotter, you'll want to adjust that in the Marlin firmware, which is something I've covered in previous videos, so I don't plan on making a full video on that. I've been really impressed with this conversion and the first cube I did looked amazing. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have successfully installed the BMS Dragonfly into your Creality printer, or at least now have a much better understanding of the process involved and if this is something that you wanna do. If you have any questions or there's any part that you're unclear about, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.